Hello everyone. I saw a man recently that I hadn't seen in over 10 years. The last time we met, he was on a trolley in an army field hospital, having been badly injured in a grenade attack. And the only way that I knew he was still alive was because a cloth bandage laid over the wound on his chest was moving very, very slightly as his heart beat underneath. And I told him that at the time, it seemed to me this tiny movement, the beating of his heart, was something heroic. Despite the awful wounds he had suffered, his heart was still beating, and that was an act of defiance against those who had tried to kill him. A heroic thing. And he looked at me and he said, you know, that's just nonsense. The thing wasn't heroic at all. I was still alive because I was wearing body armour, which protected me from the worst of the blast. And a medic who was with me kept me alive until a helicopter arrived to take me to hospital. And of course he was right. It's easy to rewrite history and to make events like these into something from the films, heroes doing great things. It's like the people we will remember this week, the thousands of men and women who were killed in war, the men from our school whose names are written on our chapel memorial. It's easy to think of them like actors in a film with the music playing, heroes all. But of course, that's not the way it was at all. They didn't ask to be killed. Like my friend, they were ordinary people like you and me and it's just that they were in a terrible circumstance because that was what their country had asked them to do. And many of these people died as a result. And I think that in some ways it is doing them a disservice by calling them heroes. You see, if you're Superman, it's very easy to face an enemy because bullets just bounce off you. But if you're just an ordinary person, it takes real courage to face an enemy. That's why what these men did was extraordinary, and that's what we remember. The bravery of ordinary people and all that they achieved. Because of them, we live in a country where we can live in peace, and that's why we honour them at Remembrance Time. Of course, this remarkable thing that they gave us, a chance for a peaceful and secure life, needs to be protected. So laying our wreaths and wearing our poppies is actually an act of commitment to carry on the work that they did so that the freedom that we enjoy will still be there for our children and our grandchildren. On the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour, as we stand in silence, don't just remember the fallen, but also commit yourselves to protect the freedoms that they bought at such a heavy price so that they continue long after we are gone. A First World War poem gives a voice to the men killed in battle and they speak from their graves as the battle rages above their heads and they call on those still alive to continue the fight. And the last verse says this, Now you take on the quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. We stand in the shadow of these men and women. It's our job to pick up the torch and to continue to guard our country. Now I hope that none of you will ever have to stand in a battleground, but we all know the difference between right and wrong. And when you stand for what is right in school or at home or wherever you are, what you're doing is carrying the torch that those men died for and continuing the good work that they started. And of course, if we don't, we dishonour the names represented in these memorials and everything that they did would be for nothing. We'll say a prayer. Heavenly Father, at Remembrance Time, we think of all who died for their country in war and particularly for those from our school. We give thanks that because of what they did, we live in peace and security. Help us not take for granted the world they fought for. Give us courage to stand for what is right and to maintain the precious peace they handed to us. May God bless you and keep you wherever you find yourself this week and whatever you do. Amen.